Hundreds, if not thousands, of sex offenders gone from the registry. That's what could be ahead right here in Maryland after judges ruling this week. Here's ABC 2 News' Katrina Bush with more on this story. Katrina, what did you find out? Well, Jamie and Kelly, the ruling in Maryland Court of Appeals gives us insight into the distinction between federal law and the state constitution. According to the ruling, federal law does not override the state constitution, and because of that, up to 1,500 names could be gone from the sex offender registry. Even so, experts say it might not have as much of an impact as as you may think. A violation of the state constitution. That was the ruling for adding sex offenders to the registry whose crimes were committed before the list was created in 1995. Adam Rosenberg, executive director at Baltimore Child Abuse Center, says he's not surprised by the ruling. I understand the court's ruling um, in that these are people who, uh, whose convictions uh, took place before this law went into effect. I, I appreciate that. On the other side, though, if we're building a system of, of child protection, um, it, it, is, it is one facet of our, of our system which which has been dismantled a little bit one facet that's the key Rosenberg says he says the registry is a great tool but certainly doesn't guarantee the public is 100 percent informed even if people are on the registry um, I think it underscores the fact that there are uh, convicted sex offenders living in our community and there are sex offenders who haven't been convicted but living in our community and you know having people's names on a list isn't necessarily going to keep us that much safer in fact the US U.S. Department of Justice estimates that 54% of sexual assaults are never reported to the police. Rosenberg says that's just one reason the registry shouldn't be looked at as the only way to stay informed and fight abuse. He says the first step is talking to your children about preventing sexual abuse. Second, make sure professionals get the right training so they can recognize the signs. Three is youth serving organizations should be doing background checks so that people who have been previously convicted of crimes um, involving children or involving people uh, don't have access to children. And four is if we have suspicious of abuse, we have to report it. Um, and so we, we can certainly have a system that works to protect children without uh, these people on the registry still. Right now, there are more than 8,000 registered sex offenders in Maryland. About 1,500 of them are registered for crimes committed before 1995. Katrina Bush, ABC 2 News.